live for our very first This Week in Business for 2021. It is just Kingsley and I today. Anthony's off having a little bit of a break. But Anthony, uh, Kingsley, how was your Christmas and New Year's? Good? Yeah, it was pretty good, actually. I was, enjoyed the break. It's a, it's a nice time for accountants because everyone stops, so you don't have to check your phone. Oh, look, a lot of my clients didn't stop, so that was kind of interesting when I was trying to stop. But, you mm. know, that's the joys of small business, right? Yes, it is. All right, so what have you got for us today of things coming up uh, in business? A couple of bits and pieces. Uh, number one is that uh, we are now into the time frame for JobKeeper 3. So, uh, I mean, the vast majority of West Australian businesses dropped out with the end of JobKeeper 1 and didn't get JobKeeper 2, and that will almost certainly be the case of JobKeeper 3. But for anyone who has had a bit of a rough run uh, leading up to Christmas, uh, probably is worth having a, a look to see whether you can get JobKeeper 3, even if maybe you just missed out on JobKeeper 2 or something. So just be aware that's there if, you, if you're still doing it tough uh, and check it out to see if you qualify. Uh, the other thing that I'm sort of fielding a few questions about uh, since coming back or a little bit over the break is a number of people, I think when people go on holidays and have a bit of a thing about what they're going to do in the business, whatever else, it often comes up, you know, I'm going to get a new ute or a new truck or a new van or a new tractor or whatever the case may it's be. The TV ads. It's the amount of TV ads about that stuff right now. Yeah. And, of course, what I'm finding myself increasingly having to tell people or warn them about is for lots and lots of small businesses, this, this wonderful fast depreciation has, has helped, but everyone's just about used their depreciation up. And so... Uh, if you're going to uh, trade your ute, let's say you're going to get a fifty thousand dollar ute, and you're going to get a forty grand or a thirty grand trade in, whatever the case may be, then of course uh, you have, you're only going to be picking up the gap uh, uh, because of the uh, it, it, for a lot of small businesses the would the sale part, the trading part, would have just gone to the what was the pool. Now the mathematics effect it's a bit more complicated, but the practical effect is you're only going to get the gap. And of course, that's even worse if you are selling some equipment and you're not getting a trade, then if you are selling something for $50,000, there's a real possibility that that's going to be $50,000 profit, which people are not accustomed to. Uh, so if you are about to sell some gear and you know you've been getting pretty fast depreciation, you need to check with your accountant where you stand on that. It also means too, I think a lot of people are going to find... Uh, at the end of this financial year, particularly people that have ended up going fairly well, they might find there's a spike in their tax because when your accountant comes to do this year's tax return, for some people depreciation could be one of even the biggest deduction and for some people it's not going to be there. Uh, so some people get a bit of shock at it. So it would be worth everyone talking to their accountant, just finding out where they are on depreciation, uh, particularly if depreciation is a big part of your business, you've got a lot of capital equipment. Uh, and then the other thing uh, I was just going to raise with people, which is not terribly accounting related, but I think it's got lost in all the politics around uh, the virus and the vaccines, is to st state it plainly, the vaccines are here. Uh, perhaps not being released in Australia yet until February, but they're, they're here. Israel has now vaccinated 22% of its population already. So... If you're a business that perhaps has done really well over the last 12 months because people can't go to Bali or something, you, you probably need to now be starting to think about, well, maybe in the not too distant future they can start going back to Bali. Am I ready for that? Have I got some things to hopefully keep them staying here and not going to Bali or, or just being ready for business to go back to what that was? None of us know how quickly people will feel comfortable about it. We don't know how quickly the government will allow you to go there or whatever else. But obviously... The crucial ingredient for that to be able to happen is here. The vaccines exist. Uh, and I don't hear much talk about uh, that. And, and, it, and a lot of the talk is, and perhaps quite rightly, but it's tampering down people's expectations about how quickly we can get back to normal. But I just raised the possible, you know, some of the predictions haven't been terribly accurate. Right. What if they're wrong? What if, what if this ha you know, virus goes a bit quicker than we think? Uh, so I just raise that for people to just be factoring that into their minds uh, and that not getting caught flat-footed.
Yeah, so we have seen over the last few weeks that Qantas has announced that they are resuming their regular international flight schedules to the UK and the US as well from July 2021. So that's only six months away, guys. That's not mm. very far. Um, if you are a business that hang, hangs out in tourism and hospitality and they, they're your clients or that's your service area, you know, definitely make some plans around what you're going to do. Um, one thing I have seen a business do in the Southwest, which I tell you, I jumped on board because I was like, wow, I want in on that. Um, they were actually, they actually contacted everyone who had stayed at their hotel um, throughout the year and um, offered up, you paid a deposit towards some accommodation and you received a discount on the accommodation, heavily discounted. Um, I think it's two nights for, I think it works out to be about $280 and you get a $20 voucher for at their restaurant for breakfast one day. Now, this is quite a nice hotel, and I thought, oh, that's pretty fancy, but all we had to pay was $70 to get that deal, and we can use that any time in the next two years. We They also then had a, um, if you bought a second one, you got a third one for free on top of that. Um, so we, I believe we paid $140, and we now have three lots of these two nights accommodation mm. at this rate. So for us, an initial financial outlay was quite low. We still have to pay the whatever the difference is each time, um, and we have to pay that before we arrive. But for mm. us, that meant, well, we've got now three holidays that we can book in locally and enjoy a nice hotel. Um, I'd love mm. to see some local restaurants get on board with that, saying, well, you dined at my restaurant, I'll offer you a two course dinner or a dinner and a wine for this and you pay $30 up front and then you make the difference up on, you know, for a set menu type thing. I'd love to see that sort of thing. And I could definitely um, get behind businesses that are doing that and promote that out there. Cause I've, my husband and I probably told about 20 people about this accommodation deal yeah. that we got who then all called the hotel and some of them got it as well. My mum called up and booked three vouchers herself. So just don't discount those opportunities that are there and the opportunities that come from those deals through that word of mouth, guys. Um, I'm sure Anthony would support the marketing out of your business and creating these things because um, yeah. it does get a little bit of cash flow through the door straight away by people making those deposits. Um, and, you know, if people then forget that they have those vouchers in the time that it's valid, well, you've still got the deposit money out of it without losing anything. So yeah. there's some good points in that opportunities. Um, I just wanted to touch on a couple of things before we finish up. We did release a social media content planner at the end of last year. It is in the group. Please grab it, download it. It's just a Google sheet that you can update and um, just download and make it what you want. It does make it much easier to do your social media if you are planning things. Um, we also have just launched all of our networking, our monthly drinks and catch ups on our meetup group. I know a lot of members are already on the meetup group. Jump on it, register for your days that suit you and it'll pop it in your calendar for you and you'll get reminders as well in your emails so you won't miss any of the events coming up. We've also organised some co-working days um, just for February and March so far. We want to see how they go before we go and launch into a whole year schedule. Uh, the February one is for business women only and it will be at Bustleton. And then the March one will be for men and women. We would love to see you all there. Again, at Bustleton, there's a great co-working space there that we would love to support and get behind. Um, so jump on the meetup group, sign up for those. Our first Friday monthly drinks in Bunbury are Friday the 22nd. So not tomorrow, guys. I'm sorry. I know we're probably all hanging out for a bit of a drink after going back to work now. But next week. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I have. What about you, Kingsley? Anything else? No, that's it for me, Luke. I've said what I need to say. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we are always here for you. We've got some really great initiatives coming up this year. I've been hard at work on some stuff behind the scenes, and we cannot wait to show you what's coming up. And we will see you next week for This Week in Business. Excellent. All right. See you, Luke. Thanks. See you later.